Hey guys, this is George, and I'm back with a new video, and today we're talking Marvel Zombies Resurrection. Marvel Zombies Resurrection is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with artwork by Leonard Kirk. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more comic book content, and hopefully you enjoy this video and you want to come back for more and also be prepared for spoilers there will be spoilers in this video i kind of give an overview of the story and then i kind of give my thoughts on how i felt about the comic itself so if you're still here well let's get into the video so marvel zombies resurrection i actually really like this issue a lot and we'll talk more about that later but this issue actually opens with a quote from edgar Allan poe from manuscript in a bottle and i'll go ahead and read you that quote it says it is evident that we are hurrying onward to some exciting knowledge some never to be imparted secret whose attainment is destruction and i thought that was a really good way to kick off this story because it does hint at the devastation and the darkness to come with each of these captions we kind of zoom in closer in space on this mysterious figure and when we get to the next page we actually learn that it's Galactus and there's this discussion between the heroes Beast, Captain America, Reed Richards, Iron Man and they're discussing what's going on because they received an emergency distress message from Captain Marvel and they're not sure if Galactus is alive or dead. They're not sure what happened to Captain Marvel but they're here discussing what their options are and what they should do in case Galactus has been killed. And so we actually get hints early on that all is not what it seems. And there's actually something very wrong here when you actually read what Captain Marvel sent to the Avengers. But at the same time, the Avengers know that they have to go in and investigate, even if they're kind of on their guard about what could be wrong. Their discussion really centers more on the potential of what other life forms could do with Galactus's dead body. Because essentially, Galactus's body in and of itself is actually this incredibly advanced technology that could be used for nefarious means if it was obtained by somebody who wanted to use it for that purpose. So it seems like their goal is to not only investigate, but also potentially maybe harvest some of that technology, but also really to make sure that that technology and Galactus's body itself doesn't fall into the hands of somebody who would use it for destructive means. So the only question now is who's actually going on this mission? And Reed Richards, he actually steps up and he's going to lead this mission with the Fantastic Four. But he asked for some heavy hitters to join them. So the Avengers and the X-Men, they're sending some of their best along on this mission too. And that's where the story begins. And as the team's loading up, we see that the X-Men are represented by Beast, Wolverine, Magneto, and Ileana, or Magic. And of the Avengers, we get to see, of course, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, War Machine... And the rest of the members of the expedition are the Fantastic Four. And what's really cool here is we get some interactions between characters you don't normally see interacting together. Like for instance, there's a really funny moment here where Johnny Storm is trying to spark a conversation or actually it seems more like he's trying to hit on magic. And we actually find out that Johnny Storm is deathly afraid of hippopotamuses. And it's so funny because Thor actually laughs in his face about this. And he says the dirty, great, fat things that loll about in rivers. <laughs> and it's just so funny. And it's just a really funny interaction because not only does Thor laugh, but everybody kind of gets a laugh at Johnny Storm's expense. And it's a really fun interaction between these characters before things go downhill for everyone so eventually the group does arrive at galactus's body and they can confirm that galactus is deceased and it's pretty easy to see that galactus died a terrible death and and they kind of comment on this it's, it's a little creepy for them and at this point they enter galactus's body and they break off into teams the fantastic four are going off and they're doing their research and they're trying to gather and analyze data while the rest of the team which includes like captain america wolverine magic magneto beast thor they're there to kind of protect and investigate what happened to galactus and captain america actually asked war machine to stay behind on the ship in case something goes wrong, he mentions that he knows and he trusts that 
that War Machine will make the right call and do whatever's necessary if it should come to it. So inside Galactus, Wolverine's actually the first to test the air. He says it stinks like a corpse, but it's breathable. He also mentions there's another smell, something familiar, but he can't quite remember. And this is important, we'll talk about it in a minute. Because Wolverine noted earlier that they're not alone and somebody was there watching them. But they're actually hidden away so we don't actually see who's watching them. And so the team does decide to go forward but they decide to proceed with caution. And at this point we get another fun interaction. There's kind of a joking moment between Captain America and Beast. And it's one of those interactions that you don't normally see. I think it's been a long time since Beast has been actually an active Avengers member. And so we don't really get to see him and Captain America interact that much. So it's a good interaction before things get really dark in the next few pages. Because there's a discovery made and it's actually Captain Marvel. But she's not right and she looks dead. She's not just dead, she's undead. She's actually a zombified Captain Marvel. And she's somewhat sentient. She actually speaks and she's inviting them to come and see what's going on and by that she means let me eat you so you can become one of us and this is come and see line is very important these undead avengers keep repeating it and it was something that was mentioned earlier in the distress transmission so they know right off the bat that carol made that distress call when she had already been turned and so it's kind of funny here because wolverine and magic have some banter magic is cocky and she cuts down carol danvers and she's like this is captain marvel and she's like i was expecting to see more of a fight but it's actually a trap because an undead Groot actually ambushes magic and kills her and it's at this time that we also see we cut to the fantastic forum and we see what they've discovered which is the silver surfer emerge from this pool of something and we see the silver come off of him revealing an undead being and he actually leaps at johnny storm killing him he bites him and kills him of course this sends sue into a tailspin and she's very upset and from here everything goes haywire because the avengers are being attacked on all sides by these galactic characters we see basically all of the galactic heroes and also other galactic characters like the Shi'ar Empire members of the Shi'ar Empire have been infected the Guardians of the Galaxy have fallen and they're swarming everyone it looks like it's gonna be a feast for these zombie characters and it's kind of a no-win scenario and Captain America sees this right away and he orders Thor to evacuate to the craft because they leave Rhodey behind in the spacecraft and he gives them orders to tell Rhodey to blast Galactus with everything they have until there's nothing left and Thor doesn't want to abandon Cap of course but Captain America gives him that order and tells him you know you're a protector of Midgard go protect Midgard forget about us and so Thor actually takes off following Captain America's order but before Thor can escape we see that at the entrance of Galactus's mouth, there's somebody waiting for him, and it's actually an undead gladiator. And so we're cutting back into the turmoil, and we see the few remaining characters there. Ben Grimm is doing his best to hold off the others, and he just tells Reed to get out of there, forget about them. The kids need their mother, and they need him. And so the Thing is doing his best to hold them off so Reed and Sue can escape. And then we see Nova come out of nowhere and deck the Thing. And so I don't know if the thing's not infected yet, but we see him fighting off Nova while Reed and Sue escape. And so Reed and Sue are escaping. Sue is distraught with grief, but then we see a force field impact as Reed runs into this force field. It's an invisible force field. And then we turn and we see that Sue's been infected. And I actually saw this on my second read through of the issue because you see earlier that Sue's suit had been ripped open. So I'm assuming that's when she became infected. But she's actually infected now, full-blown infected, and she goes after Reed, and it's implied that she takes out Reed. And so there's basically no heroes left here, or the few remaining ones are going to fall very soon. So we cut to the spacecraft where War Machine, he's opening up the ship because he sees Thor coming. And of course, we think that, you know, Thor's okay. We think that he just took out Gladiator like nothing. But as Thor gets closer and we see the others behind him, we realize that Thor has fallen and he was infected by Gladiator. And he goes to work destroying War Machine and their ship. And so at this point, basically all is lost for the Marvel heroes and the Marvel zombies have won. 
And so we cut back to Earth and Spider-Man's sitting there with the FF kids and he's chatting with Valeria and he's talking about how it's really nothing to worry about. They do this kind of thing all the time. It's kind of like a routine mission for them because even though Valeria is very intelligent, she's also a very young person and emotionally it's kind of easy to discern that she is worried about her parents. And so Spider-Man's there trying to set her at ease. And then we just see one of the kids is looking up at the sky. We see what looks like an asteroid coming to Earth. And then on the final page, it's not an asteroid. It's Galactus's enormous body plummeting into the Earth. And it says to be continued. So that's Marvel Zombies Resurrection. And I really enjoyed this issue. I was actually surprised how much I enjoyed this issue. Not because I don't enjoy this usual stuff. I kind of expect this sort of thing when I read zombie comics because I read so many zombie comics any chance I get. But what I loved most about the issue is that there's a real buildup and there's a real tension as everything comes to a head. Normally in a lot of zombie comics and movies, there's the big outbreak, everything's kind of gone to hell in a handbasket and then the survivors have to kind of deal with it from the very beginning. But in this story, there's a real buildup to it and I actually liked that. There was a lot of tension and it allowed for moments of levity and humor while at the same time building up these foreboding elements that bad things are on the way for our heroes. And I was really reminded of the Twilight Zone because there seems to be this recurring message throughout the issue, even from the start with the Edgar Allan Poe quote, that the pursuit of knowledge can sometimes be deadly and that maybe some things are better left unknown. And these elements of the story are what really reminded me of The Twilight Zone because for those who aren't familiar, The Twilight Zone is an anthology series from the 1960s and it's basically morality tales that focus on individuals and put them in strange and unusual and sometimes horrifying situations because there's usually a lesson to be learned by the characters in these stories and we get to see what they do and how they react and usually based on the individual character's personality things can take a turn for the worse very quickly and it's one of my favorite television shows of all time and that's what it really feels like in this issue and i feel that reed richards would be the main character in this story if it were a twilight zone episode because he's the one who kind of initiates all of the actions that lead to this his interest in the unknown and finding out information and knowledge leads them to Galactus and rather than just destroying Galactus when they see it's a dead body, Reed does embark on learning more and entering Galactus's body to see what could have caused this. And then before everything goes to hell in a handbasket, Sue actually tells Reed, you know, something's off here. We should we should get going. And Johnny and Ben kind of chime in that they agree. But Reed's curiosity and basically desire for discovery get the better of him. And instead of heeding their warning, he pushes on and eventually this leads to their destruction whereas if he would have heeded their warning or just ordered that the Galactus body be destroyed this whole thing could have been avoided so that's why I say I was reminded of the Twilight Zone because it reminded me of like an episode and I'll give you kind of like a rundown if you've never seen the Twilight Zone the episodes always open with a speech from the narrator Rod Serling so get ready because I'm about to give you my best impression of Rod Serling because I really want you to get a feel for the Twilight Zone because that's what I felt when I was reading this issue. And so this is kind of how the, each episode starts, but imagine if you will, a world of heroes and villains. A world filled with individuals capable of unimaginable and fantastic abilities. And one among them stands above the rest, a man driven by science motivated by knowledge. His name is Reed Richards, family man, superhero, adventurer, and scientist. Reed is a learned man who has a nearly insatiable thirst for knowledge. And in tonight's episode of The Twilight Zone, he'll learn some things are better left unknown. <laughs> Yeah, I know. 
I know that was a pretty bad Rod Serling impression, but you get the point. Marvel Zombies Resurrection is a bit of a morality tale about being overwhelmed with the desire for knowledge that sometimes it leads you in very dark places. And in the Marvel Zombies universe, it leads to all of your friends and family being eaten and turned into zombies. And then having a giant cosmic being crash into your planet. So that's what happened here. And I really like that about this issue. It was a lot of fun. I love the elements that remind me of the Twilight Zone. There's also a lot of humor in this issue. I think there's a lot of great character moments in this story for it being so short. Like Ben Grimm being the hero that he is, trying to make the sacrifice to save Reed Richards and Sue because he cares so much about Reed and Sue's kids that he doesn't want them to grow up without parents, so he stays behind to hold off the zombies while Reed and Sue make their escape. And something else that I'm really happy about with this issue is that there should be more issues. It did say to be continued, and something I wasn't aware of before is that in the advertisements, I never saw anything that said Marvel Zombies Resurrection number one of four or, or one of three or one of six. It just said Marvel Zombies Resurrection, as in implying that it's just a one shot or a one and done story. But it does say to be continued, so I am really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Even though with Galactus's massive body plummeting into the Earth, it doesn't seem like there's going to be very many people left, if any at all. Unless they decide to have Galactus do like a complete stop before impact, and then the Marvel zombies are unleashed onto the Earth. And then we get to see how the rest of Marvel's heroes deal with the undead Avengers, X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. Something I really also thought was interesting is that Wolverine kind of has a critical role here. And I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know what they're referring to. Because Wolverine seems kind of familiar with something. Whatever it is that caused this, Wolverine kind of seems to have a knowledge of it. I really like that mystery about the story is that I don't know what they're referring to. So if you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas what this thing actually is, this thing that tells the other heroes to come and see before infecting them, I, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. And maybe you can point me in the right direction, or maybe you're just as much in the dark as I am about what this actual thing is. I think if I actually had any kind of gripe with this issue, it's actually more of a gripe as a collector rather than a gripe with the actual issue and its contents. And by that I mean I collect comic books, I'm a big fan of comic books, and something I didn't really care for about this particular issue as a collector was that the quality of the paper of the cover was very flimsy. It was something that it seemed like it was very easy to rip. I nearly ripped the cover a few times. Normally Marvel actually has really good cardstock covers that are more of a higher quality and it's kind of harder for, for something like that to happen. This issue, they kind of use flimsy paper for the cover and I, I kind of didn't really like that. So that's kind of my only gripe and it's more of a collector kind of gripe rather than an actual problem with the, the issue itself. So I really enjoyed this issue. I hope you enjoyed this review. There was a lot to enjoy. You should definitely pick up this issue. It's a lot of fun. Definitely something you'll want to read if you're a horror comics fan or if you love the Marvel zombies or if you just want a fun read with zombies in it. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Punch the subscribe button because it needs to be punched in the face. That way you can be notified of more of my comic book uploads. You can also punch the like button because that one also needs a punch in the face. And if you love this video, feel free to share it with others. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.